you guys know I'm all about efficiency and the most efficient way to do something when you have multiples to make is to get them to run all at the same time. And that's what I'm going to do with the Lazy Daisy Centers since we need to make four of them for the January Kimberbell Cuties Table Toppers Volume 2. I am in Embrilliance Essentials. This is a wonderful, inexpensive, fabulous piece of embroidery software. It's my favorite. And I am going to come down here to my Kimberbell Cuties folder. Here's my Lazy Daisy Center, and I'm going to pull it into, just grab it, drag it, and drop it. There we go. And it automatically goes to center. I talked about making multiples. If I was to do multiples of these, one at a time, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me pull in another one. I could have copied and pasted, but I'll just pull in another one and show you. When you don't do what is called color sorting, this is your stitch order over here in the objects panel. And what this will do is it will stitch, it'll do this part in number one, this number one, number one, number one. And it will go through and do all 11 elements of number one, and then it will do all 11 elements of number two. We don't want to do that because that is a total of 11 in number one and 11 in number two, and that is 22 color stops. That's a lot. So I'm going to delete the second one. I'm just going to highlight it here in the objects panel and hit delete on my keyboard. The idea behind color sorting is that all of the same colors will stitch at the same time. And you can tell here the way the digitizer has done this. The very first stitch is the outline stitch to tell you where all of your applique pieces are going to go. And then we have a placement line and tack down and a placement line and a tack down. And if you look at colors over here on the side, you can see that the placement lines are all in blue, okay? And the tack down lines are all in orange. Well, if we were to color sort, it would stitch all of the placement lines at one time. And we don't want that because we still need to layer the applique pieces. And if they're all stitching at once, then you don't get that layered effect. So what I want to do is I want to change these to be different colors. So let me color sort right now. We know we have, we have 11 different color stops. So if I were to highlight the object and utility color sort right now, it reduced it by three color changes because it is stitching all of the blues at once, all of the orange at once. Let me go to new view. I don't want to save it or it'll mess with my original. And then look. So this is what we would have. So there's our outline and that's fine. But here it's stitching those two blues at once, those two oranges at once, the blacks at once, which is this placement line out here, which isn't even supposed to be stitched. And then this outline right here, this wouldn't work at all. This is a disaster. So I'm going to get out of that. I wanted to show you what color sorting does. This is why you, you click the new view. So I still have all my 11. Okay. So what I want to do is change these into individual colors and it does not matter which one. It's going to set it up so that I'm going to set individual colors in one of these designs, then I'm gonna copy and paste that and make two designs and then color sort them and then it'll all work out. So the very first one is the dark purple outline and that is fine. The next one is blue, default one blue, that's fine. This, again, this does not matter what color it is, it just needs to be different for each one, so. There's two orange, so here's default one blue again. I want to change that, and to change the color, you just click the chip, and I'm gonna click on 3906 Pacific Blue because it's the first one that came up. I'm gonna tell it okay. Here's default two orange. We've already used that one time, so I'm gonna click on it and choose 1120 Sunset and tell it okay. Black, that's fine, that can stay just like that. Here's the turquoise, I'm gonna click it, go to Caribbean, tell it okay. There's that default one blue again, 
I'm going to click that. We've already used Pacific Blue, so I'm going to jump to Wave Blue and tell it OK. Here's that orange again. We've already used that. We've already used 1120 Sunset, so I'm going to choose Pumpkin and tell it OK. All right, and here's the turquoise. We've already used that. I'll leave that as turquoise because this was turquoise, right? I think, no, one of these was. It's the only time it's listed, so it's fine. And then this black needs to change because we've already used it once, even though we're not going to stitch that. And I'll just choose the 1366 mahogany and tell it okay. All right, so we still have all 11 color stops, but now they're all different colors, which is perfect. So now what I want to do, I'm going to click on the object and I'm going to right click and copy and then right click and paste. It pasted directly on top. I'm going to use my down arrow on my keyboard and just bring this down. There is a quarter inch cut right here. You need to cut this a quarter of an inch away on this side and a quarter inch away from this side. So I just leave them lined up. They're easy, but you just want to make sure you've got space in here to be able to go from a quarter inch away up to five and a half. So you don't want them too close. So this is fine. I'm going to control A to select all. And I'm going to come up here to the utility menu now, and I'm going to color sort. And it is sorting and it has reduced it by 11 color changes. All right, so I'm going to click new view so I don't mess with my original. And my hoop is sideways. Let me scroll back on my mouse wheel and that makes it easier to see. Let me double click on my hoop down here to turn it. There we go, nice and easy. Now look over here in the objects panel. On our original, we have two. We have number one and number two. We can open up number two and there's all the 11 pieces in number two. But on our color sorted one, we only have one. And when I click it, you can see I only have 11 color stops. So we went from 22 color stops, 11 here and 11 here. to just 11. So now it's going to stitch the outline on the first one and then the second one. There's placement, placement, see? Okay, tack down, tack down. That's exactly what you're looking for. Okay, so I've got this all color sorted. And now what I want to do is I want to bring in my background quilting from my clear blue tiles. So I'm going to come down here to my Kimberbell folder and I'm going to go to my clear blue tiles, not block by block, and I want the 8 by 14 winter. Now if you have clear blue tiles and you don't have the expansion set, you could do the 4 by 10 and the 4 by 4 and you'd still get 8 by 14. So I'm just going to drag the 8 by 14 over. There we go because the essential set only goes up to 10 inches. So let me move this out of the way so that you guys can take a look at it. It's very pretty, okay? Doesn't have a little snowman on it, but it's fine, it looks wonderful. All right, I'm gonna put this back into the hoop. Let me click my, see this little button up here, center in the hoop? How easy is that? Very nice. And I'm gonna be using my 10 by 16 hoop. Let me click on my preferences. And here it is right here, and apply, tell it okay. And I want my background quilting to stitch first. So I am just going to make sure it's highlighted and right click and put move first. So now the background quilting will stitch and then we'll get the designs and they'll stitch and that's it. That's how easy that is to color sort these and get them ready to stitch out all at one time, it is just so much more efficient if you have a single needle machine with a large hoop and you can accommodate this. As I had mentioned in the prep video, I am doing the background squares two at a time. I 
combined two designs in in brilliance and then color sorted them so that they would stitch out basically at the same time. You really only need to color sort if you have a single needle machine. It, it's not that big of a deal on the multi-needle unless you want to set it up so that if you've got to put batting down you want to do that at one time and, and then a fabric and do that at one time and different fabric applique, whatever. So anyway, um, this is my 8x14 clear blue tile. Now clear blue tiles are a product by Kimberbell and what they do, you have to you have to get the essentials set. And these go all the way up to a 10 inch design. And you get the essential set and it comes with I got a hot mess going on here, guys. You get scads of clear blue tiles that are all in the back. You get a USB with all of your designs on it and you get a couple of snap bands and some marking pens, water soluble marking pens. I use friction markers. And then you get, it gives you a list of all the sizes that are included down here. And then there's 372 design files in the clear blue tiles essential set. Part of those 372 are design files for the expansion set. So the expansion set goes up to a 14 inch clear blue tile. So the USB does not come in this one. If you get the you get the clear blue tiles but you don't get the USB. That all of your designs up to 14 are on this one right here. Now, what exactly is a clear blue tile? I'll link to a video right up here to show you how I use them. But essentially, all it is is a visual placement system for embroidery designs that would be for background quilting. That's what they are. And I have my two designs. I'm going to stitch them in the 10 by 16 hoop on the Luminaire. And so I'm going to put one about right here. This is fabric one, this aqua solid, fabric one, and then I'll do the other one right here and that leaves me the fabric down here that I need for the four two and a half inch squares that are going to be the lazy daisy centers. I'm just going to right now I'm going to cut this so that I can adhere a woven stabilizer to the back of the fabric and then I'm going to use Pellon's 987F and put that on the back of the stabilizer as well. I want to go ahead and cut this a little bit like one inch larger than the clear blue tile and I'm not going to mark it right now because I'm getting ready to go iron the fabric. I'll mark it afterwards but I just have this on here as kind of a way to eyeball it. I'll cut that. I need a two and a half inch strip for the four by the four two and a half inch squares. I'm cutting this separate because I'm not going to put the batting on the back of that one. All right, so I'm going to put the SF-101 on the back of this fabric and this fabric, and then I'm going to put Pellon 987F on the back of this background fabric. I'm using the Faultless magic quilting and crafting spray. I love this stuff. It doesn't have any smell. It doesn't flake. It's great. I think you can get it at Joann's. I ran into these guys at the Houston Quilt Festival and um, it, they made a believer out of me. I just love it. Okay, and then I'm going to iron this one. It doesn't have any scent either. So you can get it on Amazon too, I think. Oh, wish they sold it in the grocery stores. Okay. So I need SF-101. This is the woven stabilizer that you can use if you don't have Kimberbell's woven stabilizer. And I buy this by the bolt. It doesn't need steam. So I'm just going to put this on here. And I'm going to lay this like 
right on it where I'll cut it apart. I guess I shouldn't have cut it, right? I should have just cut off a two and a half inch strip after I ironed the whole thing, huh? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this over to my cutting table and go cut it up. I'm gonna give this another hit of heat. Now, they recommend putting this on the back of all fabrics, including those fabrics that are going to be part of the applique, you do get a better stitch out because the, the stabilizer gives the thread something to hold on to. But, especially when you're dealing with white fabric that's going to go on top of something a little bit darker, It'll, it'll make the white fabric more opaque so you don't see that darker fabric coming through the back of it. Now I need to put my pillow on 987 on the back of this. I'll be using 987F in all of my table toppers. I like how thin it is and especially for placemats and table toppers and that kind of thing. You want a nice thin batting so that things don't wobble if they get set on top of it. I usually put the orphan pieces, the scraps, with the bolt. And the way I do this is I will just barely over the edge cover this. And that way I'm going to trim it like that. It's much easier to do it like this than it is to pre-cut it and try to get it exactly to measure. This way I only have to cut it once. I like this stuff because it's only fusible on one side, which is really nice. All right, I'm gonna go trim this up. I have a 15 inch roll of no-show poly mesh. I need to order some more of this. And here's my 10 by 16 hoop. All right, so I'm just gonna put this on here Exact marking on this one isn't necessary because we're not putting a whole bunch of them together. So I'm just going to mark center and give me my four little, and then this way is up. And I know that this is eight by 14. And I'm going to put a little mark over here on this side so I know I can put this one over here. And then I'm not going to run it over myself. Okay. That's all I really need, all right? So I need to drop my needle right here. This is zero center. See those marks? So that's zero center on both of these. I'm gonna use my dime magnetic hoop and take my no-show poly mesh, just lay it over the top, about an inch extra on all sides. I'm going to use the winter design in the clear blue tiles to quilt. When you do this, you want to get this approximately center. Okay, so I just take my thumb and I'm going to, I've got my hoop, I've got hash marks on my hoop, left, right, top and bottom on the bottom frame. Okay, so I can eyeball center like that. You don't want to get it too far away from center because then the machine will tell you you need a bigger hoop and you don't want to do that because this is a pretty big design. So I'm just going to fold it in half is what I'm going to do and I'm going to put it approximately center because I can see the horizontal hash marks and vertical and come over just a little bit more just like that. Okay, I'm going to put, whoop, oh, I'm straight, just, you know, eyeball it. There's not an exact science on this. Okay, I'm gonna put that down. So you notice I put the hoop guard. I put the little um, corrugated plastic down first and then you can just slide it out and you don't get any pinched fingers. Straighten out my stabilizer. And now I'm gonna take some one inch paper tape. I have this in my Amazon store. And I'm just going to tape down the edge just to hold it taut. The hopping foot is not going, let me show you. Okay, the hopping foot is not going to catch this because it's going to stop in here. 
I'm just putting this on here to keep it kind of taut. I don't have to get all wound up. And it's not going to go past the edge of the fabric, top and bottom, either. So I'm not going to put any tape on that. I'm just putting it here to kind of hold it since I don't have fabric anywhere but over here underneath the magnet on the hoop. So I think we're ready to get started. I'm going to go over here to the Luminaire and pop this in. Okay, I'm at the Luminaire. I need to pull up the design, so I'm going to touch embroidery. And I'm going to go to the Pocket for Memory. And I sent the design over wirelessly using Embrilliance. So I'm going to touch the wireless button. If you brought the design over with a USB, you would go to the universal symbol for USB right there. And let's see where it is. Um, Jan Cuties 2, right there. That's excellent. And I'm going to hit set. Now, if you have the background quilting done and you're bringing it over separately, you would pull up the background quilting design first. And before you touch embroidery, you would choose the add button. And then you would bring in this piece right here. And, um, but I've got them together in one file, so we're good to go. So I'm just going to touch embroidery. And I want to show you what you've got on your screen right here. This button right here is your W foot. The W foot is the embroidery foot on the Luminaire, and it has a little green crosshair in it. And if you touch it, you'll drop a green illuminated, illuminated crosshair down on your fabric. And this design is 13.87 by 7.85. There's 11,428 stitches in here, and we are on zero stitch, stitch zero. This is important because if you ever have to go back, you definitely want to make a note. If you make a boo-boo and you have to stop, you want to make a note of the stitch that you were on so you can get back exactly to that one or maybe a little bit before it to start again. And we have 12 color changes. We're on zero of 12, and it says it's going to take 17 minutes to stitch out. Since we're doing applique, you can pretty much triple that. It's going to take that long to get that done. In, in layout, you can move, rotate, use a snowman sticker, whatever. I don't need that. And it gives you a preview of what it is about to stitch right here underneath the layout button. And then it goes through all of the thread color changes that are going to happen in the design. Down here at the bottom, we have return. We have the ability to turn off the trim. Uh, you, you don't want to do that on this one. You want it to cut the trim as much as possible. Trim is the thread cutting underneath. And then we have needle plus minus. Very important if you make a boo boo. You've got a needle drop point. It'll Put that down, drop the needle so you can see where it's going to land, and then we have the trace. We don't need to do any of that because we've got this all figured out, which I did in the software already. If I wanted to save this design to memory, I could by touching the memory button. If you look at the thread colors they have here in the book, for the Lazy Daisy in January, it's white all the way through. So that's going to be really easy. And the very last step, we do not stitch, okay? So I'm going to rethread my machine with white thread. I have a 70 weight dime pre-wound bobbin in the bobbin case. And then what I do is I take the previous thread that I used, and I take my new thread, and I hang the two tails together and twist it once or twice and just make one simple knot like that. I like to run it through the thread guide that's there for the bobbin. Just gives it a little mind of where to go. And then I unthread the needle. I reach in front of it and unthread the needle and then just slowly pull the thread through until I get to the knot and bring it up. And I'm going to hit the needle threader button. All right, I am going to touch the W foot right here so I can get my crosshair to figure out where I need to be. And it's dropped it on the fabric. I'll show you in a minute. And I'm going to hit layout and I'm going to go to rotate because on rotate you can rotate and move, whereas on move you can only move. 
So if it needs to rotate at all, I have the option to do that. That's just a handy little shortcut there. Get you in to see the crosshair. Now I'm going to touch my move buttons and jog it over there. Okay, that's really close and it looks really straight. So I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm not going to rotate it at all. And I'm going to touch OK on the layout. And I'm ready to go here. Uh, the button is green on the front of the machine. So I'm just going to hit go and let it do its thing. It's going to take seven minutes to stitch out this first background quilting design. All right, I'll see you guys back here in a bit. All right, we finished the background quilting and it just looks so incredibly cute. The very next stitch is the outline for the Lazy Daisy part, so I'm just gonna press go. So we are on number one, stitch the piecing template. Okay, it gives you the stitch order right here. So template piece number one is down here on the bottom, two is the middle and three is the top and then the half center. And the number one fabric is the white with the blue dots. And you're gonna lay it face up, completely covering all of the stitch area of number one. And I'm gonna take two little pieces of tape and I'm gonna put these over number one, kind of hard to see, and place petal one fabric right side up completely covering section one, stitch the trimming placement line, and trim the fabric close to the stitch line. I see. Okay, so we're going to stitch this next line right here. All right, so I'm going to remove the hoop. Whenever you take the hoop out, you want to make sure you put it on some sort of firm surface so that you don't pop it out, okay? And then what we're going to do, I've got some duck build scissors here, and these prevent you from cutting into your fabric. So I'm just going to lift this up and press it back, and then we're going to trim it like this on the top of the stitch line so that the fabric is still completely covering all of section one. and it exposes section two. Place petal two fabric right side down over the stitch line, right? With one long edge centered on the placement line and then stitch the seam. So the petal two fabric, I'm gonna come back here. Petal two fabric is the white snowflake on white, Lazy Daisy petal two. I'm gonna take this and you're gonna place it face down, covering that stitch line right there, just to make sure it doesn't run off when I'm not looking. I'm gonna stitch that down. Remove the hoop from the machine, and I'm going to pull up the tape. I've got my little Cricut mini iron, mini press, heating up here. And I'm going to fold this over completely I've got a little extra fabric from the cut there. And I'm going to finger crease this down. Now you can use one of those little pressing rollers. You can use an iron, you can finger crease it. Whatever you want to do. I should have saved that tape, huh? I'm going to pull this really taut and tape it down. Put the hoop back in the machine. The next stitch is going to stitch that down and create the placement line for the next petal. 
remove the hoop from the machine. I'm going to fold this back completely and then trim it. And then we're going to take the next petal piece and lay it directly on that line face down. I'm going to tape it. We're on stitch six. It's going to tack that down. See, you, you definitely want to make two at a time if you can. Huge time saver. Okay, remove the hoop. I'm going to lift this up. Save my tape. Fold it over. Iron it flat. Tape it back down. With Kimber Bell, you got to trust the process. In the end, you're going to love it. Uh-oh, what happened? Let's see, check and re-thread the upper thread, okay. Whenever this happens, you wanna pull the thread out following the thread path if possible. I don't know if I can, because the thread went way up in the machine. Huh, let me re-thread. When you have that happen, you want to back up, usually 10 to 20 stitches. You need to trim away any loose threads that happened here so I can see it it started back up in here so you want to hit needle plus minus on your screen and on this screen you can jump ahead a thread color or go back a thread color and then minus one plus one minus ten plus ten minus a hundred plus a hundred minus a thousand plus a thousand and then you can go back to zero so I want to minus ten and ten more and that's about where the problem was, so I'm going to tell it okay. Then we'll just get started again. So it's real important that you figure out where that needle plus minus is on your machine. Okay, we're going to remove the hoop. I need to trim around the quarter circle, starting with the blue dots. I'm going to fold it over. You can only, because it goes to this point right here, fold it over and just trim on that line right there on that fold line that you made. Very handy to have a trash can around when you do this. Okay, now I'm going to trim around the top of the entire design. We are trimming this one down on that fold line there. It would be easier with my curved scissors. And I think they're packed in a Yazzie bag somewhere. I haven't seen them since our last RV trip. These aren't working well. I need those curved. Okay, you're best off with a pair of these really pointed curved scissors instead of the duck bills. Duck bills are great if you can lift up the project. Do you need these sharp scissors to get down in here? Okay, that looks right. I was wondering why it didn't look right. Okay, there we go. Hopefully, that's okay. I cut it a little short in there. You gotta be careful of that. Now it's gonna do the final satin stitching around the outside of the daisy petals. Put a piece of tape on the top here and you want to place this right over that covering it completely and the tack down okay now we're going to remove the hoop and trim away just on the top of the tack down line Okay, and then it's going to do the final decorative stitch on that. Mm -hmm. 
and the last stitch we don't stitch. I'm going to remove the hoop. I'm going to iron away my little marking. Don't need that. Okay, we can trim these up now to five. And All right, I need to trim these up to five and a half inch square. So the way I'm going to do that is to turn it so that I'm going to cut the quarter inch seam allowance first on the sides. And I'm just going to put it a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the white. This is why you want them lined up in the embroidery software if you do this like this. Okay. All right. Good. And then a quarter of an inch away. Let me turn these over here to five and a half now. Using my five and okay. I have an extra half inch over here on this ruler. I love this. This is a quilter select ruler. You, I think you can only get these in quilt shops. You know, they don't sell them pretty much anywhere else. But it's five and a half square this way, or five and a half from the cut edge there. This will be the other piece that I do. And then uh, it's a lot easier sometimes to use a smaller ruler. No, oh, other way and a quarter of an inch away from the white edge. Okay, on both of these. So I am lining up my quarter inch along the edge of the white and I'm lining up a straight line on the edge I cut down here. And then you would cut five and a half this way. If you are a Creative Notion subscriber and you have a five and a half inch square ruler, that's handy. Make sure this is straight. I got my white a little short in there. I'm gonna have to work some magic to get that so it's not obvious. Very good. That worked out great. Okay. And then this. Okay. Very good. Okay, so there's the first two. And I'm going to do the next two on the multi needle. But that's how you do it. All right, I sent the design over here wirelessly using the Brother Design Database Transfer. And I'm going to touch the wireless button to bring it up. And here it is right here. It says it's too large for the extra large frame. We need to rotate it. I'm going to tell it OK. This is going to be pedal number one over here on the left, and then two, and then three. So I'm going to hit set. Let's rotate it and see. I'll go 90 and it'll flip it. Yeah, that, I, that's fine. So it's, this is number one, and then two, and then three, and that's kind of how it was in the Luminaire. So that's just how I want it for my head. Okay, so I'm going to tell it Edit End. And now I need to assign thread colors. So I'm going to touch the spools right here. And every one of these is going to be spool number six because it is white. This is a list of all the color stops right here. These columns correspond to the spools on the back of the machine. This is a preview window of what it's about to stitch. And then we're on one of 11. This is the hand, that's uh, stop. And then the last one, uh, the zigzag with the line through it is do not stitch. And then we have the okay button. The machine doesn't care what color you want to do it in. It, it just wants to know which thread spool to use. So the very first one, I'm going to touch a six. and you would think that this machine would stitch and then stop, but that's not how this machine thinks. It thinks stop and then stitch. So when we go to number two, before it stitches number two, I want it to stop. So I'm going to touch the hand and then I'm going to tell it number six. And I'm going to tell it to stop before it stitches every single stitch 
So because we have applique duties we have to take care of for each one. So I'm just going to continue to touch it, stop, and stitch number six. Stop, stitch number six. This is really simple on this one to just go through here. It doesn't require a lot of thought, which I like. Stop, six. And we're not going to stitch the very last one. That is just a placement stitch we don't need. And then one, I'm going to put do not stitch and tell it OK. All right. Well, since we're working on some embroidery here, I am going to install the quilting table onto this because that's going to make it really easy to just pull the hoop right out and do the applique work that I need to right here in front of the machine. Take these little knobs that just drop down in there, up and over slides right in and then it's got two screws underneath to screw tight. This just makes life a lot easier. Okay. I have a Filtech magnetic bobbin uh, in the bobbin case and I am using Isocord white poly 40 weight. Put my iron up here. Okay, I am ready to go. I am going to touch embroidery. Let's see and it's ready to go. It's hard to see on the screen because it, it knows I've anchored white on number six and so you're not going to be able to see anything on the screen. But I'm going to touch lock and go. Okay, I need my little white with the blue dots to completely cover the first section. And fold this up on this side, on the inside, and trim it straight on the fold line. One thing you might want to do if you're removing the hoop from the machine, it does help sometimes to take a sharpie front because if you have this hoop like this, it doesn't matter which way it goes in and you just don't want to get turned around. That would be a bad thing. So that'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, and oh, before we get started here, I need to take the second fabric and I'm gonna place it right over that stitch line. Piece of tape, hold that down. And same for this one, right over that stitch line, right up on the edge, match the raw edges there and tape it down. Lock and go. And my Martelli rotating mat came with a bright sunny yellow hot pad, <laughs> ironing pad, which is handy. So I'm going to just fold this over and finger crease it. And I'm going to iron it down. Okay. And then same with this one. Press this down. Okay. There's the tack down for that. Okay. Fold this up. Crease it. And trim. Right. My next piece of fabric, I'm going to lay it right on that stitch line, face down on that stitch line. Okay. Put that back. Lock and go. And it will tack it down. Okay, remove the hoop and lift the tape, fold it over, finger crease. Okay. Press. 
down just for grins. And it's going to do the stitching around the outside. Okay, I'm gonna trim around the outsides now. These go pretty quick the second time. The more you make, the better you get at them. <laughs> but you can definitely see what, why you want to make them in multiples. Okay, so you want to fold it up on that stitch line that it didn't tack down, but fold it up right against that stitch line and then cut on that fold line. All right, now it's going to do the final decorative stitch around the outside. Okay, now it's going to stitch the placement line for the centers. And I'm just going to place this right over the top of it. They have plenty of room on that. And now it will stitch the tack down for the centers. And now trim away around the top. Just leave this under here, but trim away around the top. And now it's going to do the final decorative stitching on the centers. And we're all finished. That was pretty easy. Okay, I'm going to trim these up like I did on the ones for the single needle. All right, so the next video will be on sewing the triangles.